vitamin pill this morning, and I have a clear green glass full of water. And as I'm tipping that glass up and sucking in the water, I started thinking about the pressure that is formed by sucking in water, how you draw the water out of the glass in order to jet that pill down the belly, because I have been reading the gospel, and Jesus draws us to him with that kind of internal pressure. Like when you take a breath, does it feel like you're working and inhaling? Or does that suction just happen? You just inhale. But it's this powerful force that yanks you out of your beds, puts on your church clothes, and plops you into the pews so that Jesus drew you here. You did not come here. Is that right? That's what we believe. But that force is so powerful, we often don't think about it, except when you're taking a vitamin pill. So um, this reading is situated, again, right after Jesus fed the 5,000. And in John, Jesus is going from person to person, feeding each one individually, kind of like the priest who gives out the bread, and that's partly why it's the priest who gives out the bread, because Jesus set the example that you are seeing God when you see Jesus. And he says, those who have seen me have seen the Father. And how are we to understand this? People who live a few thousand years after he walked the earth. How do we see Jesus? Well, John starts with saying that in the beginning of the gospel that the Word is God and God is the Word. And he created the Word out of himself. So when we read scripture and study these stories, we are encountering Jesus in the scripture itself. But also when we hold out our uh, little humble hands to receive that little moon sliver of bread, we are receiving Jesus there. So we are tasting, we are seeing, and we are experiencing Christ living in our midst. Part of the eternal life that Jesus invites us to is not just longitude. It's not just we're going to end up in heaven. If that were the case, why go through this long peregrination that we're going through during our life? Jesus compares himself to the man that comes from above. He did that last week in our sermon and in the gospel. And again this week, but this time we're not thinking about how Jesus comes down from heaven and provides himself as bread. We're thinking of the Jewish people who were formed by this process of being taken as slaves from Egypt and deposited in the desert only to wander around for 40 years. Why were they wandering around for 40 years? What in the heck were they doing? Did somebody have a compass? Well, this is where they were formed as a people, that every day they got up and there's manna, that manna that they were so sick of, there's manna on the leaves to give them sustenance. Every day there was water for them to drink. But was it just about the concrete bread and water, or manna and water? Well, no. Did they listen to Moses, or did they kvetch? they kvetched. And this reading today is about kvetching. Because they're saying, well, we know your mother and your father. I don't think you are the bread of life. I mean, give us a break. They're being sarcastic. They're kvetching. And they're blocking themselves to seeing any truth or inspiration in Jesus. They have a problem and Jesus says, don't worry. You must not be those who are drawn to the truth. Those who are drawn are those who are drawn. Raise your hand if you feel like you're drawn. It's like, well, thank you, Jesus. What if we weren't drawn? What if we were one of those kvetching? Is there any grace for us? Well, this is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you have some friends that will drag you and say, quit putting blocks in front of Jesus and let him talk to you. Let him show himself to you. The Mormons have this thing right. They never push their faith on their, um, their would-be candidates. There's a good name. They never push it. 
They tell them what they believe is the truth, and then they send them home, and they say, these 40 people are going to be praying for you all night long, that God show you the truth. And when they take the pressure off themselves and put it all in God's hands, they have a very good turnout. They pray for them to hear the truth and see the truth. We can learn something from those Mormons. But in this reading today, Jesus is saying, think about the formation of a congregation because this is what I'm doing with all of my followers. You don't just get it and then everything is gravy. Well, everything around here hasn't been gravy. We've had people that have been rushed to the hospital. We have people whose daughter died this week. It's been a very rough week for pastoral care. So where do we turn when things are rough? Jesus, thank you. Thank God, Jesus has been drawing us into a community for a very long time. 1834, this place has held a community together. This place is held together through prayer, through services during the week, through phone calls, through emails, through laying on of hands, through visits, and cars driving every which way. Do I feel lifted up by these prayers? Yes, but do the people who are receiving them feel lifted up? You better believe it. You better believe it. We are being trained as a community because we get to heaven as a community. You didn't know that, did you? We are not individuals. We are all followers that are caught in that suction, being blown into the lungs of God, God's self to be blown out into the world and scattered like little breadcrumbs. Whoever you have an influence on today, you probably won't know who it is. If you're living the gospel, just your presence emanates holiness and prayer and courage and sustenance and wonder and joy. We come together as the earliest Christians came together to hear the Gospels as they were being written, to hear the words hot off the press of people who see and experience Jesus and then tell us the truth in those words of Scripture. It's not ever to be taken lightly. And the only way we can absorb it is little bits at a time, little tiny bits, like my vitamin pill that I sucked down my belly this morning. Have faith and be happy, even if you don't feel happy. You are bounded around by happiness, by songs of joy, by the hymns we know so well, and by each other's pilgrimage. Am I alone in this pilgrimage? Never, ever, ever. So don't you forget it. <laughs>